Good morning. I got it. I'm, this is all new. I'm start, starting to uh, get used to the ins and outs of Zoom. So please be patient with me here. Okay. Good morning and welcome to the Boulder Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. I'm Lisa Moore, the intern minister here, and I'm joined today by service associate Linda Thornton, Tad Coriath, Emily Jaworski Coria, and the fellowship choir providing music, and also our tech ushers, Bill Beachley, Cameron Wise, and Deborah Mensch, who help things run very smoothly. And the most important people to mention are all of you, the fellowship, and all the wonder people, wonderful people you are, for you are the reason we do any of this. As I say the welcome words today, I invite you to shift into gallery mode if you would like to, or if you haven't already done so, and scroll through the screens so you can experience the lovely diversity of this congregation. Again, because without it and without you, there would be no us. You are all welcome here today. In all the beauty of languages, cultures, skin tones, shapes, and sizes that come together in your unique, uniqueness, you are welcome here. In all the ways you experience and express gender, you are welcome here. In the beauty that is who you love and how you love, you are welcome here. In all the ways you make your living and the places you are from, you are welcome here. Christian, pagan, humanist, Jew, atheist, Buddhist, mystic, Muslim, Unitarian, Universalist, or if you just don't know, with all of the traditions that inform your spiritual life, you are welcome here today. No matter how long you are away, nor how soon you will return, you are welcome here. Whether you come with laughter in your heart or tears, you are welcome here. You are invited to join with us with an open mind, a loving heart, and willing hands. We welcome you today. I have a few announcements this morning. Reverend Lydia is holding a chat for newcomers in a breakout session that will follow the service today. Um, we'll continue our conversation today about the congregational justice affirmations in a breakout room following the service. Please try to attend one of these breakout sessions before the December 6th all congregation meeting. A link to the affirmations is going into the chat right now. Our spiritual formation for children and youth continues online each week. See the chat for a link with all the details. Next week is our annual bread service. Different this year from ever before. We're turning to video once again for a part of our sharing. Send a picture or short 10 second or less video of a bread or food that is part of your family traditions, whether family of origin or chosen family. Make sure to, you let us know in writing the name of the bread or the food item, its significance, whether homemade or where you buy it. Pictures and videos need to go to Linda Thornton by Tuesday, uh, November 17th. And just as an FYI, we won't be using any audio from the videos. You can also send any recipes to Paul Brintison by the 19th of November for more ways to share. And we're pasting all that into the chat as well. 
If you are new here, we are grateful you found us and hope that in this virtual community, you can experience the warmth and love of this congregation. Each Sunday is a little different here, so please come back a few times to really get to know us. If you want to get better connected, please see the chat window for the link to our first time visitors page or email your information to our office manager, Carol, at officemanager at bvuuf.org. Her email address will be in the chat window as well. And please be sure to check out the fellowship can calendar and Connections Weekly for all the opportunities we have to stay connected. Finally, if any of you new people would like to introduce yourselves in the chat, please do. We love to know who is among us. All are invited to stay for virtual coffee hour after the service or join any of the other offerings that I just spoke about. So if you have a chalice at home, you can light it with me as I light our fellowship chalice. So we all know where we are and our chalices are. Please, if you would like, write in the chat, chalice lit and the name of your town. Please say these words along with me as I light our chalice. We light the chalice for the warmth of fire, the light of truth, and the energy of action. Now I'll sing the bowl again, inviting it to draw you deeper into the present moment and this, our beloved community. Our opening words today are from Reverend Joan Javier Duval, a poem entitled, Lay It Down. Here, here is where you can lay it down. Lay down all that you have carried, the weight of the world that has rounded your back, leaving you aching and exhausted here. Here is where healing begins, where burdens are set down and alongside one another's, their magnitude does not seem as great. Here, here is where the door is thrown open and the light can lift away the shadows and what was hidden can now be seen here. Here is where you can rest. Where nothing is expected, but that you bring all of who you are into the presence of the holy and of this loving community. Let us worship together. See 
Wow, that was amazing, thank you. And now I invite us into our time of community connection and our time of sacred sharing. If you'd like to share a joy or concern, please raise your hand using the button in the participants window and tech usher Cameron will unmute you or if you might see a pop-up window asking you to unmute yourself. If you prefer, you can share your joy or concern in the chat window by sending a chat to everyone, and then Cameron will read out loud what you send. When you do share, whether, whether by voice or by chat, please tell us your name and where you live, and briefly let us know what is in your heart today. And I will put a stone in the sacred waters on your behalf. For those thoughts, joys, and concerns still felt and yet left unmentioned.
O oh universe, of which we are a part and interconnected. Please hear our joys and our laments. Please extend your energies out to all of us to build sacred communities of healing and create space for warmth, compassion, and sharing. Please have health and give to those who need strength and vitality. May all experience love and connection throughout all time. Blessed be. When my husband, Jonathan, and I were foster parents, we would take care of one infant at a time. That room attached to the sanctuary with the big window in it, that's called the cuddle room. And we would camp out there each Sunday for the months that we had the baby. We even started to decorate the room and had our favorite rocking chairs picked out. The ushers would pop in to say hi, and so would the people coming back from the bathroom. And then coffee hour afterward was filled with coffee. My two hands around a warm mug because the baby was being cooed over in various pairs of loving arms. Then inevitably, one Sunday, Jonathan and I would be back to sitting in the sanctuary. People walking in would see that we were not in the cuddle room and they would stop mid-step. Then they would come over and hold our empty hands. We'd pack our calendar with game nights, with friends, movies, comedy clubs, everything. And we'd sleep and slowly we'd heal. Not repair where you fix something that is broken back to its original state. More like a clay figure being squished and remolded into something new and hopefully better. And then it didn't stop with us. The babies would heal, not fix or repair, but heal. And the birth families would heal, the village would heal, and our home would heal. The nursery room that looked achingly empty would start to look like it was waiting waiting to start the whole beautiful, messy, painful, miraculous circle all over again. As I was preparing for today's service, I was thinking back, but I couldn't remember if I ever thank you all. So thank you for holding us while we healed, for holding us so we could heal. Good morning, everyone. I'm Director of Music, Tad Coriath. Next, we're going to have a musical meditation on healing and forgiveness. This is a piece I wrote with the fellowship choir. The primary lyric, which we chose is, please forgive me, I forgive you, I love you, thank you. And when we meet again, we'll be okay. This is repeated many times, almost like a chant or a mantra. There will be a video playing, but aside from these captioned words, 
there really isn't anything to look at. So I invite you to just listen to the song. It lasts about seven minutes. Maybe shut your eyes, dogs. Maybe bring to mind someone or something with whom you have a strained or broken relationship that you wish to be better. May this song open your heart to the possibility of healing.
Each week, we remind ourselves of the abundance of our lives and this community by giving half of our plate away to those organizations that share our values. Today, we share our plate with Together Colorado, a multi-faith statewide organization committed to bringing the faith value of human dignity to the public square. Today, Together Colorado has been our partner in justice work for over a decade now, connecting us with those most impacted by the injustices in our state, teaching us skills in community organizing and linking our faith to powerful interfaith action. In the areas of immigration, enhancing access to mental health services, preserving affordable housing, economic and racial justice, Together Colorado has been central in our effective work for justice. Today's offering will support our annual dues to this mighty statewide organization. After you make your donation, feel free to share in the chat your answer to this question. When have you experienced healing? When have you experienced spiritual healing within this community?
For the work of this fellowship, bringing love, reason, compassion, and justice into the world, and to the justice making of Together Colorado, we dedicate our offerings. And now we sing. From you I receive, to you I give. Together we share, and from this we live. I'm just reading all the beautiful chats that you share, and I'm, I'm just getting a little heart expansive. Thank you. So why are we here? What makes it worthwhile to spend some time on a Sunday morning, currently in our own little Zoomiverse, looking across the airwaves into other people's little Zoomiverses, waiting for the time to come when we can sit together under one roof again and contemplate the question I first asked? Some might think, well, it's what we do. And others might say for a feeling of community or a sense of religious belonging. The music is amazing. Coffee. I'm going to share with you another window to gaze out of when I think of why we gather here. I've been a massage therapist off and on for the past 20 something years and consistently for the past 10. As a massage therapist, I assist others in their healing. I like to tell my clients, I'm just a tool to help you on your healing journey. Because the healing that they look for really oftentimes, it's their bodies and it's what they need to heal from within and I just help them along. As I entered seminary, I said that I'm going from helping people to heal their bodies to helping them heal their souls. A person usually comes to see me for one of three reasons. Something hurts or is out of whack, so it needs repair, maybe from a car injury um, or some other type of uh, injury or something they did or that happened to them. Injury prevention. So I have some people come in because they like to do something like long distance, like marathons or running or, or some sport, and they want to make sure that they don't get themselves injured while they're doing the thing that they enjoy. And another reason they come to see me is for maintenance, to make sure that maybe an injury that they've had that's healed doesn't come back. I believe one of the big reasons we gather in spiritual community is for a similar reason as why people seek out other healers in other ways. To help us heal the broken spiritual parts of us, to keep our souls from breaking in the first place, and to maintain our sacred selves after our brokenness has started to heal. And some of us, and I'm not talking just about ministers here. Some of us come with our scars and our so stories to create the space for the sacred healing of others. You see, no, none of us heal alone. No matter what kind of healing we need, it never happens by oneself. 
As a massage therapist, I helped others with their healing. And even though I'm self-employed, I am still in a community that helps me heal others. I have the space that I rent, other massage therapists who work on me so that my body can continue to do what it does, the people I purchase my materials and supplies from. And I can go deep into the well, recognizing all the interconnectedness necessary for me to do one seemingly simple little thing, apply pressure to a muscle. In this way, I am able to pass on the healing that I receive to my client. The same is true when we gather in spiritual community. Some of us come with broken spirits and wounded souls. Others gather here with healing wounds or scars from past spiritual traumas. We all gather here together because there is something within us that knows some deep feeling that in this space, whether this space is the sanctuary or the Zoomiverse, this space that we create will help heal each other, ourselves, and spread that secret healing into the world and universe. Coming into this space with the intent to heal and grow together creates loving compassion that we can bring out into the other communities we share. After my daughter was born, at the time I was not a member of any spiritual community, I started to seek out a place, some re religious place that I could help raise her in, that I needed help to raise her. See, at the time, and I couldn't articulate why, I was, I was, I was um, as some people like to call it, a recovering Catholic. And I couldn't articulate why I needed to go find this space. But I knew that there was something in me that needed that and that I couldn't create that on my own. And that both me and my daughter needed some type of spiritual home. I'm not saying we get it right all the time. In spiritual communities, just like anywhere else, we make mistakes. And sometimes they are truly dreadful mistakes. However, even doctors make mistakes. There can be missed diagnosis or misdiagnosis. But a good doctor isn't going to flee when that happens. They stay with the patient, gather more information, and make corrections and adjustments. Sometimes it's the doctor's fault. Sometimes it's something entirely out of anybody's control. Sometimes it could be simple, something as simple as a patient forgetting to mention something that they have done or that they take that might influence their outcome. I remember once I, my back went out. This is, this is several years ago. And they gave me uh, some pain medicine and it made me vomit. And so I had to go back and say, hey, this isn't quite working. And, and then we were able to have this conversation to find something that did work and did help my, my back pain. Um, when we make spiritual mistakes, or personal ones, it is just as important for us to ask those additional questions and stay in that relationship. Just as an exercise is a way to build physical muscle or cardio, biking, walking might help build our heart muscle. Staying and growing within our spiritual community even in the unperfect, imperfectness of how it is right now, is a way to develop the sacred resilience that we need to grow our souls, to heal our souls, and to keep them healthy and strong. 
And yes, sometimes no matter what the scenario, sacred community, beloved community, doctor's offices, a person does need to remove themselves or to be removed from a particular community because of harm. I don't want to minimize harm inflicted or created under those circumstances. Just as we have healers for our bodies and our minds, religious community is a place to heal and maintain our souls. We have doctors, dentists, mental health care providers, personal trainers, massage therapists. For our physical and mental well being, educators, we need spiritual community to help our souls stay healthy. And then we can also share and create that health in those around us. One of my professors, Mike Hogue, in his book, American Eminence, Democracy for an Uncertain World, World, writes, no thing or relation fully stands apart from all other things or fully outside of all other relations I'm going to say that one more time because, like, to me, that is it, that just blew me away. No thing or relation stands fully apart from all other things or fully outside of all other relations. This is the seventh principle, folks. We do nothing alone. We are interconnected, interconnected. Again, whether we are in our Zoomiverse inside of it or outside of it, we need to join together to heal, to grow, and maintain the well being of our sacredness and that of others. Blessed be. I'm now going to introduce the next song. I invite you to sing along if you would like. It's called Lean On Me.
We extinguish the chalice, but not the warmth of love, the light of truth, nor the energy of action. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again. So for our benediction, I invite you to start your video so that we can see everybody. We're going to do a little experiment. As I know, sometimes it is hard to feel connected in these little Zoom boxes. We're going to do something called a hand dance. I invite you first to put one hand on your heart and then reach out toward that little screen to the little dot that takes our pictures and reach out and send your heart loving energy to those in this massive community. Breathe in, breathe in the love and breathe out and share the healing that you have for others. And now we're going to take our hands and we're going to put them on the sides of our little Zoom boxes and see if we can find the other places where we see hands in other Zoom boxes and we can hold hands or we can put our hands down here and we can feel that connection because it's all energy. And we're, we're here creating energy or in our own little Zoom boxes creating energy. It's all here for us. So feel that do the little hand dance. Maybe remember that we are here for each other. Yeah, here and down there. And as we do our hand dance, let us go forth and remember our connections to each other. Go farther than these little Zoom screens and our bigger than our sanctuary. Reach out, connect, create 